In this video, we're going to walk through the difference between independent and dependent views. So uh, I've already created some views in this project, and there's really two big differences from independent and dependent views. So I'll create some more floor plans um, so we can walk through these and you can really see the difference. So um, we look at these. So I basically have two first floors here and let's call this um, first floor unit B. And effectively what we'll be able to do here is, so we have a overall plan and in this, I'm going to, um, well, let's see what we want to put in here. We've got some systems. I'll put some just electrical content in here because that's what I've got. Um, so we'll go ahead and put some electrical uh, fixtures. Let's see what families I actually have loaded in this project. Um, maybe I don't have anything. So with this, let's go ahead and we're just going to put lights into this project really quick. So we'll go ahead and populate this model with a whole bunch of lights so that we can play with those and annotate them. And then this project, um, since that's something that is easy to see and play with. So this is a tool that I built to automate uh, placement of a whole bunch of fixtures and content throughout your uh, models, primarily for electrical uh, equipment, but uh, can, you know, go through some of the other automation pieces here shortly. So what this is going to do is place a whole bunch of lights in the project, um, and then we'll be able to go through independent and independent views. But the the long and the short of it for really independent views are views that you're probably used to working with, right? It's just a one-off of maybe each floor, each level, um, all that kind of good stuff. And dependent views, on the other hand, are just like they sound, right? They're dependent on the view that was made uh, from, right? That they were made from. And really this, a lot of it goes to working preferences. So if you want to go through and design or work on an overall uh, floor plan at any given time versus uh, the individual unit plans, uh, but then have all your stuff show up in the unit plans, you can work on an overall plan, create your two, uh, dependent views, right, for unit A, unit B through G, and everything that you worked on in the overall plan, right, you can go through and annotate all the room tags, um, do everything at once versus doing it in unit A, and then, you know, create all uh, room tags in unit B, and then go through and change them, all that kind of stuff. You can do it in basically one uh, big, big shot. So what we just put in here um, I guess I'll need to do a ceiling plan to look at these. So we'll create a ceiling plan for these. So we got all these light fixtures in here. And now what we're going to do uh, with these, so we've got our first floor, um, and we can even show this in a floor plan too. So uh, first floor unit B. So let's just go through and annotate. We're tag all our uh, room tags. So we'll go ahead and do that from our linked model, since this is a linked model. We'll go ahead and turn on our rooms. Okay, so all of our rooms are in here, but they're not gonna show up in this plan. So yet when we do that for this first floor plan, right, we can tag all, do the same thing, come through, tag our room tags, right? We'll apply our room tags, but, because we created two dependent views, all of the room tags are also going to be showing up in here, right? All these room tags are going to be here, which is pretty cool. So, um, and the same thing if we go basically throughout, right? We'll see that uh, tag all. Go ahead and do our room tags, apply, right? Overall plan. And then in our unit A, you can see all the room tags. And then with this too, our architectural plan, you know, the lights are showing up. But if we don't want them to show up in this plan, we can turn off our lighting fixtures. Okay. We got our room tags. You know, B, all our room tags. Right. So 
fairly easy, fairly straightforward way to, to do that. And if you want to create another dependent view, you can go ahead and duplicate view, duplicate with detailing um, or duplicate as a dependent, right? So you can take all that uh, detailing that's already there, duplicate it. So we'll wait to duplicate everything with detailing. So basically what this is going to be is its own deal. So if you duplicate with detailing, it now basically just created a copy with everything that you've detailed and not as a dependent view. So now if I go through and you know take out all these instances visible in view, right, of all these room tags, if I delete all of these, they are now no longer visible in the uh, dependent views, right? But if we um, basically create another floor plan, second floor, um, find it, or let me just duplicate again, duplicate view, duplicate with detailing, right? So this doesn't have anything. If we reapply to this view, so if we go back to annotate, tag all, right, and tag all of our room tags included in linked element, right? So now all of our room tags are in this view. They're back in our dependent views. And then in our duplicated view, it is not uh, done. So again, if you'd like to work in overall plans, this is a great solution. Um, the only thing, as you can see, is when you create these dependent views, they do take a while for Revit to basically generate the visual graphics, um, and it does all that graphical computational work to create the view. So it's the only kind of downfall in creating these. Um, and in the uh, last video in this, which is going to be our next one in the bonus, is using automation to basically do everything for you and uh, speed it up. So stay tuned for the next video, and we'll be back. So that's how to use dependent and independent views within your Revit project.